Welcome back to our video series, Burning with Intelligence. Today, we're gonna to be covering the emissions calculator software for Windows PCs and Windows tablets. We are releasing our new emissions calculator 2020 onto the market via our tech site, which you guys can all download from there. If you don't know what the emissions calculator is, it is a way for us and you guys to ascertain fuel savings and emissions reductions based on a variety of different factors. So we need a small amount of information from the customer, things like your fuel usage, fuel cost, what burners are they running, what boiler size have they got, how are they running those burners, maybe some stack temperatures in there as well. And we can take known performance data, optimization of that particular burner, or you can install a brand new burner if you want, which is obviously gonna have an effect on those projected emissions. So let's have a look what has changed, what is new in the new Emissions Calculator 2020. So here we've got the new Emissions Calculator 2020. Now right off the bat, you can see a few things have been improved over the previous version. Main thing is that everything is on a single page now. So there's not tabs down at the bottom, not different color buttons. All of your existing data, projected data, emission savings and fuel savings is now all at a glance on a single page. So in the new emissions calculator 2020, we've got the same eight section headers as before, plus your savings on the right hand side. So if we start with section one, top left, these are your site details. Now one of our UK technical sales engineers, DEC, is on site right now at a London NHS hospital, which is what we're gonna input as our company name. Our site name is just boiler room number one. I've also got some contact information in there as well. This is all mine, which will populate on the final report. Section two are your ambient conditions. So this is where you define your units. In our case, we'll be using Imperial. You also need to input your ambient temperature. We're gonna be using 77 degrees F. And then finally, you need to input your ambient pressure. Now on the previous emissions calculator, this was an offset from standard sea level. This is now an absolute value. So for example, in kilopascals, it's 101.325. That is ambient sea level. Section number three is your fuel selection. So you've got a few choices in here. If we tap on the drop down, we can see we've got Birmingham, Alabama natural gas, which is what we're gonna be using. You can also have Pittsburgh PA natural gas as well. You've also got a variety of different types of gaseous fuels and liquid fuels. Now, if you're running maybe some kind of digester gas, uh, biogas, some kind of byproduct of the process, then you can also create a new fuel in this section. Section number four are your burner details. This is really where we define your fuel cost and your fuel usage. Now you should be able to get this from the customer's fuel bill, maybe on a weekly or monthly bill. So you can input that data here, or you can estimate it based off of what they do have on site. First thing we need is the fuel consumption. We've got it just over 200,000 cubic feet per day. And then we've got the fuel cost. Now obviously this varies state by state, customer by customer, industrial and commercial as well. So we've got $4 per thousand cubic feet in our calculator. Now we're using US dollars. You can take that away and type in whatever unit of currency that you want. For example, South African Rand. Now, if your unit of currency has the symbol after the numbers, then we can also select this box down at the bottom. Section number five is your existing performance data. So we can get this either from information from the customer or we can use DEC who is on site for us now. So I'm gonna pass over to DEC and he's gonna give me the information that I need. Okay, so the boiler runs off natural gas. I'm gonna take some readings now from the test point in the rear stack. Hey guys, readings are as followed. So at high fire, we were 6% O2. Mid fire, we were 7% O2. And low fire, 8% O2. 
Across the firing range, the CO is 80 ppm and the NO is 50 ppm. So real good savings to be made here. It'd be really interesting to see what our emissions calculator has to say. Over to you guys. Cheers, Deck. Thanks for the information. Now let's input it into our emissions calculator. So we have a variety of different boxes where we can input the data here. We have low fire, mid fire, and high fire. We need to tell the calculator how often the burner sits at low fire, how often it sits at mid, and how often at high. So I've input 40% at low, 40% at mid, and 20% at high fire. I'm gonna take your O2 readings and input 8%, 7%, and 6% between low and high fire. And the CO and NO is constant, 80 ppm and 50 ppm for that NO. Section six are your existing stack details. So we can take, say, a, a stack diameter of five feet, and we can now see what our exhaust exit velocities are. Now this section is optional because maybe it's quite difficult to get up to the stack and measure it. Maybe there's a lot of cladding and you don't know how thick that is. So we do leave this section optional. Section seven is your projected performance data. Now this is really dependent on whether you're installing a brand new burner or just retrofitting, upgrading that control system. Dex been on site, he's given me that existing data. We know we're going for a, a controls upgrade uh, in this case. So we're gonna use historical performance data to input O2s, CO and NO values at your high, mid and low fire positions. So based on this particular burner type, the size, loads of different factors, I know for low fire, I'm gonna put in 6% O2. And then for my mid and high fire, I'm putting in 5% O2. Now the CO, across the board, we're dropping to around about 60 ppm, and we're keeping the NO the same at 50 ppm. Now what we can do, based on that existing performance and projected performance data, is actually look at a side-by-side -side comparison. So if we tap on this analysis button down on the left-hand side, we can see a live comparison between your existing and performance emissions data, efficiencies, fuel usage, loads of parameters that are really useful for you guys to look at. Section number eight is your projected stack dimensions. Now we're gonna keep these exactly the same. We're not changing the stack in this case. Now the final section, which all of you guys will be familiar with, is our savings section, both for emissions and fuel savings. Now based on the existing data, the performance data, we've got an emission saving annually of 16.36%. Now we can see both from a, a tonnage point of view, volumetrically and percentage volume, all of our emissions, okay? And also what our totalized emissions are. Moving on to the fuel savings, we can see volumetrically how much fuel we're physically saving but also how does that tally up to a monetary value in our case just over $19,000 per year in fuel savings now we've also added a new section down at the bottom we've just called it additional savings it's a way for you guys to justify where you're getting these savings values from now on the old software we had mm savings and ega you could select these deselect these increase and decrease those savings manually as well. We've gone a step further in the new emissions calculator 2020 by adding a drop down box. So if you tap on the little arrow, you've got additional sections such as your water levels, bottom blowdowns, draft control, all potential sources of savings. Now it's also a free text box. So I've typed in PID control and added it as a new source of savings. Now any good system, if it's set up correctly, with PID control can save an additional three to 8% in fuel savings. Now I've been conservative and just set this as 2%, but there's an up and down arrow as well. So you can increase and decrease as you see fit. So now we've input all of our fuel data, our existing performance data, projected performance data, and we can see our savings on the right hand side. We can now generate a nine page report that you can give to your customer. You can take data out as you wish. So how do we do that? If we go to file and then down to print, we want to print this as a PDF. We're essentially saving it as a PDF. So I'm using Microsoft print to PDF. Make sure you press okay. It's going to ask you where 
to save it. I'm going to save it in my downloads. I'm going to save it as NHS Hospital Report. Make sure you press save and it will save it into that location. So let's have a look what that report looks like. Okay, so here we have our nine page emissions report. Now I've opened this just in a standard PDF viewer. Page one is just our site details. That's section one from our emissions calculator. So this was our NHS hospital in London, boiler room one, and I was the engineer. If we scroll through section one, this is really talking about the product itself. So the emissions calculator, how we input some of that data, some of the justification for where we get those savings from, and also some of the calculations and thermodynamic constants that we have to have in there. Section two is now our existing performance. So you can start seeing parallels with what was actually on that emissions calculator. Section three is then, of course, our projected. And the final section that we wanna be looking at is the savings page. This is where we can see all of that data that we just saw on the right-hand side of that calculator. Finally, section five is talking about our graphs. So all of that tabular data that we had now in a graphical form, same as what we had on the previous calculator. So we've got harmful emissions, friendly emissions, and also efficiencies and fuel costs. Now, another feature we've brought to the new emissions calculator 2020 is an ROI calculator. So return on investment. So if we tap tools, at the top and then down onto our ROI calculator, we can input an investment case name. We'll keep it as just a proposed upgrade, but for the project cost, I'm gonna enter in $15,000. Okay, pretty typical for factoring in the component costs, labor costs, that sort of thing. You can obviously increase, decrease this as you see fit. Now we're using our annual energy savings, annual cost savings, the life cycle savings over say 10 year period um, to ascertain our payback period, our ROI. So we can see our payback period is almost 0.8 of a year. Okay, so under a year. You can also show the customer graphically what this looks like over a five year period or a 10 year period. In my case, we've got it set as 10 years. Obviously red, you're in the negative. As soon as you go green, the customer's essentially making money based on this upgrade. The same as our report, we can also print this as a PDF to include it in your quotations to the customer. So the last thing that we can look at are all of those graphs that we just saw on that report, but we can view them real time using the calculator. So if you tap the graphs at the top, you can select your harmful or friendly emissions, efficiencies, and your fuel cost comparisons. So that rounds up the new emissions calculator 2020. For any questions, please do let me know and tune in next time for more intelligent answers to burning questions.